because these shoes are not comfortable. David, thank you for sweeping that up. It looks almost like there's salt there, doesn't it? It almost looks like there's salt there, but it's grass, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Weston called and said, I'm not going to be here. Can you mow the lawn? And Eric's like, sure, it's 92 out. Yay. <laughs> I don't know why you keep doing that. I want to take the chair up. I got my first call. The guy said, he goes, I'm doing no, a survey for pastors finding out what their needs are. And I'm like, okay. Halfway through it, who are you going for? No. But he went through the whole list of the kind of the shoot the whole party. And the, I'm like, I didn't even know there were that many
Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm not retired. Because the retired folks get their pension while they're working. So some of them, you know, work for $2. Testing. There we go. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we'd like to welcome any and all who are visiting with us today to um, fill out the visitor information card. If you are thinking about getting rid of clothes, toys, housewares, please set them aside for our annual rummage sale. The drop-off for our church attendees is on September 15th, and for the general public, there's a list. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are some drop-off times, and then there'll be a pack and label to pack everything up after the sale on um, the 21st from noon until 2. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Kenny has one. Since the rummage sale is three weeks away, um, there is a sign-up sheet down by the door. Anytime that we have the church open for drop-off or sale, we have to have one person here. And so hopefully we'll have one person that'll sign up. And make sure you put time after your name when you're signing up for a date. And if there's any times we can't cover, then we'll just lock the church up and be closed. Thank you. Thanks, Connie. Um, the, the new upper rooms are in the basket out by the door. Next Sunday is the 1st of September, so if you like to read it first thing in the morning, you should pick it up today. Thank you for switching that out. We will have our choir starting again on September 8th following the church service. You do not have, need to have any experience, just want to sing, and we will teach you the music.
So right after the service on September 8th. Are there any other announcements for this morning? All right, we'll have our welcome. This week, look in your email box for a survey coming from the worship committee. And it is going to give you three options for what's going to be fall and possibly a winter study. And it's going to explain what it is. And all we're asking is that you, when you return it, just return what is your number one, your number two, and your number three choice. And then we're going to decide what to do with that and um, hopefully come up with some time. Also, um, if you could put on that whether you would prefer a daytime study or an evening study, that would help us out a lot as we're deciding when the studies go. Um, and we'll have some next week and for uh, a couple of weeks, we'll have a survey in person too. And if you do one, please don't do the other. Unless you're really invested in some class, then just keep going. So. Welcome to Kirkland United Methodist Church, all that are here in worship and all that are joining us on Facebook and on Zoom. We are thrilled you are here, and today is our last day in our difficult text. Next week, we move into um, another series, and then after that, I'm just going to preach, you know? It's going to be okay. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the book of Romans and um, what Paul had to say to the the Gentiles and the Jewish people and the secular people all at that time. Um, our worship team today is we have Sally Brook here as our liturgist. Our soloist and our pianist is H Hannah Sturmick. Our lay leader and our um, song leader is Diane Parrish. And on AV, making sure that all of this works and everybody can worship together is Brett Collins. We are here to worship because God is good all the time. All the time, God is good.
If you would all please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Let love guide your path. The, the God, God of love is here. Love is the holiest path of all. Love, love has, has called, called us here. Holy, holy, holy. We, we gather to worship our holy God. God. Our opening hymn this morning is Lord, I Want to Be a Christian in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 402, and we'll do one, two, and four. Join me in the opening prayer. Great God, you, you come, come to us in unexpected ways. Excite our curiosity that, that we might turn aside and realize we are standing on holy ground. Appear to us in fire and wonder that we might see worlds beyond the reaches of our imaginations. Reveal the glory of your kingdom where love is genuine, where evil is forsaken, where mutual affection abides, and hospitality is shown to strangers, where all are made one. Amen. The Prince of Peace leads us into life. With this hope and this promise, please turn to one another and pass the peace of Christ uh, with your words and not your touch. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace. I'm trying to do this without anybody getting COVID. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Lynn, peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you, Pete. We'll now sing hymn number 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Sweet expressions on each 
for the children that are on Facebook this morning. And um, if you notice in the background of the slide, it shows hands that spell out love and sign language. And that's a beautiful way that many children are learning to speak at the age of two now. Instead of articulating words, they're showing that they love their parents and they love the community and are interacting with the community through sign language. And it's a way that they know that they're being understood when so many of the people are going, what did you say? What did she say? So you see all of these hands holding the word love. And that's what our scripture is about today, is multiple people coming together and showing that there is love in the world and how to be together as one people, even if you are not the same age or the same race or the same religion, that love is love. And God, who created us all, is the one that tells us to love. Now please pray with me and repeat after me. Gracious God, Thank you for teaching us to love. Let us reflect that love to the world. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. Don't hesitate to be enthusiastic. Be on fire in the spirit as you serve the Lord. Be happy in your hope. Stand your ground when you're in trouble and devote yourselves to prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone equal and don't think that you're better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Don't think that you're so smart. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourself, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is written, revenge belongs to me, I will pay it back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So this is the book of Romans, and it is actually an epistle, a letter, that um, Paul wrote to the churches in Rome. He wrote it in 57 A.D., we all know that it is. It's one of the only letters that actually has a hard date. And it was written while he was still serving churches in the uh, city of Corinth in Greece. And then he was going to take a boat ride over the Mediterranean Sea and then walk from where he got to Rome. Now, I've been on a cruise ship with things that stabilize in the Mediterranean Sea. And Eric was so um, motion sick, he couldn't get out of bed for two days. So it is not an easy passage to make, and that he made it in a small ship multiple times. 
because he went to Rome on his third trip was amazing. Now, he was writing to the Christians in Rome, and he was writing to them about their Jewish brothers and sisters. In Rome in 40 AD, the Jewish people had a riot against the Christians. It wasn't the Roman authorities coming for the Christians. It was the Jewish people. And they didn't like that this new Christian movement was spending more time in their area, having their Jewish rights that the Roman citizen had given them, but then talking about a completely different um, God, the Messiah, that they didn't believe had even come yet. So they rose in revolt and they rioted against the Christian churches, the Christian home churches. And by this time in Rome, they actually had some churches that met outside of homes. That's how fast the Christian movement was growing. In 40 AD, Caesar expelled all Jewish people from Rome. In 54 AD, believe it or not, Nero is the one that let the Jewish population back into Rome. Violence started again between the Jewish people and the Christian people. Both of them said they had God on their side. You know how those wars go. And there was violence in the streets. So before Paul came to Rome, he wrote this letter to be preached at every congregation, talking about structuring your life according to God's love. He wanted people to not only love their neighbors, but show the love to people that maybe didn't deserve it in our human thoughts, which is why this text is considered a difficult text. Because people say, if you've been mean to me, why can't I be mean back to you? If you've hurt my family, why can't I take revenge on you? Remember in the Old Testament, it said an eye for an eye. And they had all of these rules. If somebody, you know, hurts your family member or, God forbid, kills your family member or does property destruction, how you get repaid for that. And here is a church telling you, no. I want you to love your enemy. I want you to forgive the person that came after your family and maybe hurt them. And if they're hungry, I want you to feed your enemy. I want you to give them drink if they are thirsty. I want you to show that God's love is how you live your life. It's not hate and it's not destruction. It's not an eye for an eye. And he says, and then coals will be heaped upon their head. That is actually a quote from Proverbs 25, 22, where it says, I'm going to look at it, where it says, uh -huh, where is that? Gracious deeds burn away hate. That is what he was talking about. Not that if you love somebody, you're going to burn them alive. But that love is going to burn their hearts, their spirits so much that they will come around. And Paul was talking not only to the Jewish population, but always also to the Gentile population. Because by 57 AD, there was problem, there was um, violence against the Christians by the Jewish population and the secular population. Rome was starting to see this Christian group as a problem. They were preaching this weird thing about love and forgiveness and God's grace. They were talking about a leader that Rome didn't believe in. Who's this Jesus, Jesus guy? He's not part of our pantheon. We don't like that they're there. So the Roman authorities said and made a, an announcement that all Christians were atheists because they didn't believe in the Jewish God, they didn't believe in the Roman pantheon, they didn't believe in any pantheon. So these people were atheists. They became the enemy of everyone because they believed in a God that taught you love and grace and forgiveness. Now, how many here, by a raise of hands, have seen the World War II movie Hacksaw Ridge? 
Yeah, it's a great movie. And there was a gentleman in that movie that because of his religious beliefs could have been a conscientious objector and not have to serve. But he wanted to serve World War II with love, taking from the Romans, structuring his life in God's love. And he knew that if he went on the front lines, he could serve in a way that loved both our troops and the enemy. And in the movie, you see him going through boot camp, and he refuses to pick up a rifle, he refuses to pick up a knife. And those people that called themselves Christians and called themselves Jewish and called themselves good Americans made his life horrible because he didn't fit with their idea of what going to war means. He didn't, under, he didn't say that it's an eye for an eye and because they're coming after us, we got to come after them harder. Instead, he said, because of my beliefs, I want to serve you. I want to be there in love. I want to show that my faith is strong and because my faith is strong, I don't have to stay safe and sound in the United States. I can go on the front line. I can be who I am. I can have my beliefs, and I can serve you as well. He kind of got their respect. He was sent as a medic so that he didn't have to carry a gun. He wasn't a chaplain. He was on the front line. He served as a medic so that he could show love to his fellow man. And then we get to Hacksaw Ridge. And the battle goes hor horribly. It's violent. It's insane. It's just nothing but clouds of destruction. And he is the one that cares for our American soldiers. He doesn't leave during the midst of the battle. He doesn't leave after the battle. He is there making sure that our soldiers get the care they need, praying for those that have passed and literally lowering down those that are on top of the ridge to the forces below the ridge. Now what the movie shows kind of is that when he came across enemy soldiers, he also treated them, worked to save their life, and lowered them to the allies. According to the book, he lowered as many foreign soldiers, Axis soldiers, as he did the allied soldiers. He didn't discriminate who he was treating. He knew they were all children of God. They could be Christians or they could belong to the Shinto religion or Buddhist. He didn't care. He knew that his love was a love that took care of all people. His love was a love that was set out by Jesus Christ and then said so beautifully in the Romans by Paul that you are there to take care of your enemy. You are there to take care of the one that tried to hurt you. And think about it. Some of those that he saved their lives were the men that in boot camp make, made his life horrible. But he was there to show his faith. This movie, when you watch it, shows what it means to be a Christian, to hold that faith inside of you and to live it. When it's easy to live, when it's difficult to live, and even when it's horrible to live. That you don't strike back in anger. You strike back with love. You don't enjoy when the person that's on, on, side, on the opposite side of your argument or the world or your religion suffers. You treat them with love and you care for them in all ways. Prayers, food, water, even showing them friendship. And we hope that through those actions, they will burn with the fire of love in their heart. And then love will become the structure of their life. Amen. Please join us singing hymn number 100, verse 1.
as we continue to worship, we come to our time of joy and concern, and we pray for those that need our prayers on top of all that we're praying for already in our private lives. We continue to pray for Mike Roach and Andy Morrell and Caitlin Ross as they deal with the horrible disease of cancer. We pray, Lord, that you guide them to make right decisions in their care. We pray, Lord, that you guide their medical team so that they help them in all ways and they look to you for guidance. And we pray that they regain their health and they regain their strength in all ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we continue to lift up Jack Myers, who's going in for a test tomorrow. Lord, we ask that Jack finds definitive results from this test, that his team, his medical team, can then take it and do exactly what it needs to be done, and that his health is full and restored, no matter what the diagnosis comes out to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we thank you that Lynn Exner is here in worship today, and she's doing so well. We continue to pray for Phil, Philip Termini as he's going through a difficult process in his um, ongoing disease. We ask that strength returns to him and he starts to feel better. We ask that he's guided by you in all medical decisions, and his medical team is also guided by you in their treatment of Philip. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up um, Linda Johnson's brother, Rick, who is scheduled for heart surgery on September 4th. We ask you to be with him and heal him fully afterwards and that he be guided by you in all things and the medical team in all things so that this heart surgery gives him the relief that he needs and he can go on with his life as normal afterwards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up Ron Johnson and Kurt Mavis. Ron Johnson has been diagnosed with walking pneumonia. And Kurt is just feeling weak and not himself. We ask you to be with both of these gentlemen and heal them of what ills them. Strengthen them in the ways that they need to be strengthened. And to be with them in all ways that you need to guide them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there other prayers that would like to be lifted up at this time? I don't know if you know it or not, but Matt Johnson passed away yesterday. Oh. So, bless his family. Lord, we lift up Matt Johnson and all those who mourn for them. Lord, we ask you to walk with them through this difficult time, to wrap your arms around them when they need your support and your love. Lord, we know that Matt is with you in heaven, and he is cured from all that he was dealing with. And he is at peace, and he feels your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we come to you with prayers for the world, that they may find love and not hate. We come to you with prayers for all that are ill, that you may heal them and strengthen them, and they can feel your love in all ways. Lord, we come to you for those who mourn, whether it's the loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of a home, whatever that loss is, that they feel your loving arms wrap around them, that you walk with them through this difficult time. Lord, we lift up all of the pain in the world, those that are dealing with hunger, those that are dealing with being dispossessed, those that are dealing of not feeling that they're connected, connected to you. Lord, we ask you to enter their lives. Let their hearts burn with your love so that they can truly feel connected. Lord, we lift up all of these prayers to you in Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
If the ushers would come forward for this morning's offering, please. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and I will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain I will rise on eagle that you have given us and we return this portion back to you so that you can use it with your love throughout the world in Jesus name amen please remain standing for our closing hymn go forth for God in the United Methodist hymnal 670 verse 2 and 4 Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.